This is Sports Center. Hi, I'm Julie Tesheri, and five members of Team Canada's 2018 World Junior Team have reportedly been told to surrender to London police to face sexual assault charges. The charges are from an alleged sexual assault that took place at a Hockey Canada event on June 18th, 2018. This comes from a Globe and Mail report that says the players have not been charged, but have been given a period of time to present themselves to the London police. <laughs> Today is Bell Let's Talk Day. Together, let's create real change in mental health in Canada. Visit bell.ca slash let's talk to learn how you can take action today and every day. In this year's Bell Let's Talk campaign, ask everyone to play a role in creating real change. Kara Waglin recently sat down with retired NFL wide receiver Brandon Marshall, who opened up about his mental health journey and how he's contributing to improving his health while opening up the door for others to feel comfortable talking about their struggles. So with everything going so well, mm -hmm. at what point did you realize something was wrong? I can't really pinpoint one thing. There was a DUI, there was false imprisonment where I went and let my girlfriend leave the, the house. There were so many things, but what ended up happening was I went through a clinical evaluation, neurological evaluation, diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder, best way to describe it, is like emotional disorder. Can you manage, can you cope with just whatever is happening, right? What you feel is normal, but do you have the skills and tools? And that's where dialectical behavior therapy comes in where you pick up the skills and tools that most people have naturally, but you don't have, right? And so you're able to just self-regulate, get yourself back down to baseline in any moment, good or bad. Just a reminder for Bell Let's Talk Day that this year's campaign highlights 25 mental health partners that are addressing the critical need for accessible mental health support and services. Organizations Bell Let's Talk is proud to support. You can visit bell.ca slash let's talk to see these organizations and learn how you can take action today and every day. <laughs> well, we got a huge one tonight in Toronto as the Leafs take on the Jets for the first time in what will be two games in a four-day span. There's a lot to break down in this matchup, starting with the obvious, and it's not Line A versus Matthews. But on that very note, is Jesse excited? Jules, you better believe I'm pumped for tonight. And you know what? The Jets are winning because we're not losing back-to-back -back games. Are you crazy? Let's go, baby! Somehow Jesse always gets tickets when the Jets come into town. Where does he get these hookups? So yeah, he obviously is excited and for good reason. Winnipeg is first in the Central and they've been a model of consistency this season. It almost feels like the Leafs are where people thought the Jets would be and the Jets are where people thought the Leafs would be. Winnipeg hasn't lost more than three games in a row all season long. And since their last losing streak of two or more, they've lost just three times in regulation. Even though Winnipeg's incredible streak of allowing three or fewer goals came to an end against Boston, it's still definitely something to bring up, specifically the play of Vesna frontrunner, Connor Hellebuck. He's 17, 14, and two in his last 23 outings with a 940 save percentage. So Leafs fans will be very relieved to hear they will not be seeing him between the pipes tonight. As Larry Rossois gets the start for Winnipeg, what could make this matchup a little less exciting, though, is the Jets' injuries. Mark Shifley has been sidelined since January 11th, and Gabe Velarde missed their most recent game against Boston. According to our own Mark Masters, Shifley not taking line rushes at Jetskate, with Mark saying it looks like he'll miss a fifth straight game. Gabe Velarde not on the ice at all, he's also expected to be out tonight. On the Leafs side of things, all eyes are on Ilya Samsonov once again. He was the player of the game in his last outing in Seattle, and is really motivated to get back to the form that Toronto had come to expect of him. Samsonov is so wholesome. The Leafs have had a couple really emotional goalies in a row, and that's a great thing, because when things are good, they're awesome. But when they go through some hard times, it's really hard for these emotional guys not to get in their head. It's nice to see Sammy kind of starting to come out on the other side of things. Speaking of someone who might be in his own head, Captain John Tavares is going through one of the longest point droughts of his entire career, as he'll try to end it at eight games tonight. Without his production, though, Toronto has been anchored by Matthews and Marner. The duo combined for 66 points in their last 25 games, with 39 of those points being goals. I feel like tonight would be a good night for John Tavares to bounce back. He's been working really hard with the skills coaches. You know, he loves to play at home with his cute little kids in the stands. I think tonight is his night. He's been very good through all this. He says confidence is a choice and he seems to be exuding it right now. <laughs> Time now for my favorite segment and yours, why we love sports today. Why we love sports today. And is this the greatest pass of all time? Get the hyperbole alert out of here and just watch the darn play. Pass number one, guy gets it in his hand. Throws it, oh my gosh, oh my god, who's he been passing to? Look at the draw, look at the draw, landed perfectly. That is, that is epic. The angle this footage is taken at is epic. There was 
No hyperbole there. <laughs> Now joined by former CFLer and Grey Cup champion, Shay Emery. Shay, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. You've been really brave about your battle with depression and your struggles with mental health in the past. Lots of people have a really hard time talking about these sorts of things. What's made it so important to you to share your story? What has made it so important for me to share my story is really the fact that when I was transitioning out of playing professional football for eight years, being the nastiest player in the CFL, having that identity, when I was transitioning out, I didn't know where I was going. So there was so much uncertainty there. And when I was looking for resources, I really didn't know where to go and feel comfortable as a, you know, as someone that was in that high performance lifestyle, you know, in those locker rooms. And so I created it myself. I was like, I need a space where I can talk to dudes about dude stuff uh, to feel comfortable in my own skin and to move through those more difficult, more touchy subjects uh, in a way where I feel really uh, supported as a as a male, as a dude. Now, to your point, you were the toughest guy in the CFL, and you often hear the same thing from enforcers in hockey. Do you think it's even more difficult for players who are in the position of tough guy on the team specifically to not only be more susceptible to mental health issues because of concussions, but also to share? Yeah, I think I think everyone has their own experience. My experience was one of an enforcer. I would never take the claim of the toughest guy in the, in the <laughs> league, but I was voted as the nastiest. So there's some correlation there, but really, it's all verbiage. What, exactly. What really set me off was uh, on this journey was seeing some of those enforcers taking their lives and having a relation to them in, a, in the fact that I got to show up, I got to be tough, I got to do my job, which requires being very physical and a presence. Uh, so when I saw them taking their lives and really, I was battling depression and, you know, severe concussion issue that at that point in time, I knew I needed to make a dramatic shift in my life. And that's when I started to dive deeper in, into myself and really figure out through coaching and through mentorship, uh, what was the next step that I could take? Where can I go? Who can I talk to? And when I realized, you know, Bell Let's Talk was an option through, you know, the outset of Clara Hughes talking about her story. I really figured that I, this is something that I want to be a part of. I want to share my story. And now we're uh, 14 years in. And you created one of those spaces for men. You started an adventure club called Well Men to help men get outside doing activities, which just sounds like an amazing idea. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with it and how the results have been so far. Yeah, how I came up with it was when I was transitioning, I didn't have an outlet. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have my next phase planned out. You know, all my coaches and advisors who said, make sure you're thinking about the next step or we're planning in the off season. What sort of certifications are you getting? I didn't do any of that. And so when, when I got to the point where I had to face that conversation, I knew that I needed to get like-minded men around me to have conversations, you know, around the activities that we love and enjoy. So to really bring that stigmatization of, you know, men talking about their feelings or, you know, really just talking about their human experience uh, to a comfortable bonfire side chat. Uh, that's really where it came from and has turned into, you know, me publicly speaking across the country, uh, being a part of Bell Let's Talk and a variety of other national mental health organizations and campaigns. It's really provided a trajectory, a rocket ship, so to speak, to enable my story and so many other people's stories to land on the ears of men and women who are in need of you know, that, that door to be open for them to have, take that first step of having a conversation and creating real change in their life. These conversations are so powerful, Shay, and I really appreciate the time today. Is there anything else we missed in this conversation that you think is an important message to get out there? I think that the biggest thing that I wanna get across is that one, there is a crisis, and two, that the services that are getting created, the services that are out there are available, and that that first step is really just going and creating that first touch point with them, you know, creating that first conversation with the human and, and really getting through uh, on whatever level you can, having those conversations and creating that real change. Well, you definitely are creating a lot of change. Shay, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for the time, Julia. Talk to you soon. And just a reminder on this Bell Let's Talk Day that this campaign highlights 25 mental health partners that are addressing the critical need for accessible mental health supports and services. Organizations Bell Let's Talk is proud to support. You could visit bell.ca slash let's talk to view these organizations and learn how you could take action today and every day. That's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.